What do you think? Good. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday morning, May 21st, 2018, and I'm headed into work for the day on this rainy day. Before we get the week started, let's check the crypto report, shall we? All right, all right, guys. So my battery's almost dead on the camera, camera. So I'm gonna make some short clips here, plug it in, and then maybe I can add some more content later. But uh, crypto report, we're still rocking and rolling. Looks like Ethereum is above $700 uh, at the start of this week. So that's a good sign. Uh, things are looking up. Uh, I want to see it at around $810 or so in order to uh, make a little bit of profit. <clears throat> And uh, yesterday I did see XMCC go up to about a dollar three, but I was driving, so I couldn't uh, sell my coins quick enough. Uh, somebody took there was maybe 200 coins or so worth of orders out there around that price point, and somebody took them before I could get back to my computer. So that's all right, but uh, that would have been a nice little uh, sell off because then it dipped back down like ten. 10 cents which is basically 10 percent but uh that's okay like i said it's it's kind of the nature of the beast so i believe what i'm doing is called swing trading i was uh, referencing it as being uh, day trading but uh swing trading is you basically just you know play those swings versus uh day trading i guess by definition you typically don't have any positions open uh, at the end of the day. So you close your positions and then you're done for that day. Next day you start again. Um, so you might only have a position open for hours versus like a few days for with, with, with what I'm doing. Like I said, what I'm doing is called swing trading. So, um, looks like a, another awesome weekend. You know, it, I'm so happy that I went out last night because I'm not going to be able to make it to Grace's graduation party. Her graduation party is going to be, uh, I think, like June 9th or something like that. And we're going to be in Cali for our vacation. Speaking of Cali, I bought a used Olympus TG Tracker. Uh, I believe it's the green one. So it was $150. bucks. i have been thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? I got this camera. I'm good. And then I'm like, what am I doing, dude? Like, it's a 4K camera. Um, this is vacation. Why not, like, get a nicer, newer camera for that? You know, I mean, that's kind of, like, my thing. Like, I want to preserve these memories. So, if I'm going to, you know, want to do that, you know, 150 bucks, like, why not? Let's just make it happen. So, I ordered it. It hopefully should come this week. <clears throat> that means if it does come this week, I'll be able to test it out next weekend at uh, the lake house and stuff. Uh, this is a waterproof camera. It has the ability to go underwater. It does 4K. It has Wi-Fi. And it also has GPS. So it has like a log feature where you can like go hiking and stuff like that. And then it'll track like where you've been and, and all that type of stuff. So i um, really curious to check this thing out. It's pretty tiny. It does have a little pop-out screen and stuff. You guys, if you've been following my videos, I've been talking about it for like two weeks. So it's uh, really hardcore like two weeks ago for like a week straight. It was all that I can think about. So Olympus has a really cool line of tough. That's their, their nomenclature, but tough branded cameras. Uh, they even have like point and shoot style cameras that are waterproof and all that. And uh, this one's a little bit different though. This is like a more of like a wide angle uh, video camera. And I think it'll, it'll work out pretty nice for our vlogs and stuff here. So... Uh, not quite ready to start going over to 4k, but um, We'll give it a try. We'll see and maybe I can come up with a uh, workflow that would would Facilitate being able to do 4k um, I can't do anything like that with my laptop 
but uh, we'll see. So, with uh, the thing with 4K is it's the file sizes are ridiculous. So I already need to go on and order a new external hard drive. Mine is about full, and very soon I'm going to need to order a um, another drive for my NAS. Those are like three hundred dollars, three four hundred dollars per drive. So. The external I'm going to get is probably going to be a 3 or 4 terabyte, and then the internal for the NAS, whenever I can afford it or whatever, is going to be probably about another 10 gig uh, Iron Wolf drive. So i got to cut the clip, charge up the camera, and uh, eat some breakfast. So I'm rocking. These are the Amazon Amazon, Amazon Ketones, and uh, I did about a half a scoop, and then I also brought food. So I didn't eat any uh, or uh, consume any ketones yesterday. And wow, I could tell the difference. I was definitely a lot more hungry. Um, we ended up going to Chili's last night after the graduation ceremony, and it was awesome. So we got some food, they got some appetizers, some dessert, and uh, it was a good time. So stay tuned for more. All right, guys, I just got to work. It looks like it's still sprinkling and raining. Um, not too bad, but it's not going to be a fun walk in. But... Uh, Man, I am tired. This weather is not going to help things. But um, I guess it was a good call with uh, Rochelle yesterday morning not um, doing her um, play set because of the rain and all that. So it did end up sprinkling a little bit yesterday, but nothing major. But this I don't think would have helped. I think you need at least a couple good days to let that stain dry out. <clears throat> she needs to do a really good cleaning on it too. Um, a lot of dirt and stuff, so it's uh, planting season right now for the farmers and all that. So they're uh, ripping up all the fields and stuff, kicking out all kinds of dust and dirt and shit, and it's all evident on her uh, play, play set. It's all sticking to it. So I got to get into the office. Um, let's try to make today a good day. I don't think I have much on my plate, so I think I'm just going to relax. I'm fucking tired, dude. So stay tuned for more. All right, all right, just getting out of work for the day, and it looks like the rain has maybe stopped, at least for the time being, but it's still wet out, and it's like drizzling a little bit, so I feel like I'm sunburned, man, like my skin is just burning. Um, you know, I came across a video on my laptop that, uh, to be honest, I forgot about, I forgot that I had recorded it, and... What it was was a uh, video from uh, when I was uh, with uh, one of my ex-girlfriends. And it's not the kind of video that you think that would be a good video or whatever. So, one of my life experiences or, or I guess you could say like uh, life lessons is, that I've learned at least about myself is that when you realize like you're you're done with somebody like done dating somebody done seeing somebody whatever for whatever reason it's sometimes good to either write down document or maybe even take a video to uh, have to remember what um, what it was like being with that person and for somebody like me the way that I typically work is my memory is not necessarily the greatest and that's one of the reasons why I created this whole vlog and stuff was to not only document my experiences and life and all that but to uh, be able to recall it and remember it you know by re-watching these videos and stuff but, uh, so the situation with my ex-girlfriend, this is before Vicky, was her family was really fucked up. So her parents were practically divorced, but not divorced. So they still lived together. They still, like, were under the same roof, but they never spent any time together. I think they were each dating other people and all kinds of shit. So that was fucked up. But then uh, my ex's brother was like, a, 
I don't know what the term is. Like, he had done jail time. He was a deadbeat dad. He barely worked. Um, I think his favorite thing to do would, was to get drunk and then make stupid decisions. But uh, this video clip, or this particular video clip, was uh, at my ex's house. And this would have been like just as early as maybe like three years ago or something. So not like, you know, long, long, long time ago. But uh, this fucking guy, my ex's brother, was drunk. And I don't remember what started it, but it was, you know, my ex, her, their mom, and then her brother in the house. And they're all like screaming at each other. The mom, well, actually, it was, like, my ex and her brother screaming at each other, and then the mom in the middle trying to break it up or whatever. And this guy was just getting so nasty, so shitty, and then he wanted to start, um, you know, talking shit to me or about me. And I just looked at this guy, and I'm just like, this is, like, not the kind of life that I want to live. You know, I'm sitting in their house. They have a, a beautiful home that they don't maintain. So the pets shit and piss everywhere. Um, the house was just destroyed. You know, like the appliances were breaking down. So I was like, this was when I was moving out of my house. So I gave them like my washer and dryer. Um... I don't remember, I, I gave my ex a lot of shit at the time, a lot of stuff. All this stuff, right? And I just, that was a, a girl that I really cared about, and I really, I really wanted to make that relationship work. And her style of living was much different than mine. That, that's the, the only way that I can put it. And she did it she had to get out of her house she had to get out she had to get away from all that shit and uh it was just such a toxic relationship in terms of a family that it really kind of opened my eyes to like what is going on in the world you know like since i became single or i should say prior to becoming single i never realized how fucked up the majority of the world is and for them, that's just normal, or that's, like, the benchmark, and for me, I'm just, like, wow, like, these people live these lives, and you would have no clue unless you were there with them, you know what I mean? So, my ex had a lot of deep-rooted, deep-seated issues, and I kind of, like, learned, more or less, you know, what caused it all, or, or the... The, the root cause and so I was in this just crazy situation the whole family's arguing and it's not like a civilized argument like just straight out you know calling each other names flicking each other off just screaming um it's kind of like sibling stuff like when they're younger we're fucking well into adulthood you know, we were probably, me and my ex were probably like 33 years old or something at the time. And her brother was probably 35, 36 or more. Um, but to circle back on my original comment, my thing is like, you know, I kind of realized, all right, dude, like, this is why she is the way she is, you know, like, because she would get nasty when she would want to fight and stuff like that. And that, that's what that stemmed from. I finally figured it out, learned it, learned about it. Well, I basically realized that we were done and all that stuff. So, you know, when this situation was un unraveling, I was just like, you know what? This is ridiculous. But I just shot a little video. I took out my cell phone while they're fucking around. I just was videoing it. And... And that was just like a document of how absurd and how crazy that was, that situation. And I just, I was just, I was just standing there like, what am I doing? So I left and once, once he started like just talking shit to her about me, 
can feel my blood pressure start to rise a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, she was my girl, my girlfriend. I don't want anyone treating her like that. But this is her brother and their family. It still doesn't make it okay. But at the same time, I don't want to be fighting or physically fighting her family, you know. So I left. I walked out and I just sat in my car and I just like waited for them to figure out whatever the fuck they were going to do. And I, I was just like sitting in my car. I think I even recorded a video clip from my car, like pointing at their front door because I could hear them screaming from outside of the house, like at the street in my car. I was like, this is nuts. So that was like their favorite thing to do. They would each, each one of them, not, not necessarily my girl, but like her mom and the, the brother would get drunk on different nights. And then they would, you know, each, depending on which night the person got drunk, they would start the fights. So her mom would get the same way. So her mom was like it. Her brothers like it. And then every once in a while I'd see a little bit of that in her. And I was like, I, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do this. And to go back to my original comment is like, once I knew it was over, my thing with the way my memory works is I, it, it seems like, I don't want to say I focus, but I remember more of the good than the bad. So when things are, you know, not going so well or whatever, you know, after a certain amount of time, I don't really even recollect that. I kind of remember it or whatever, but my mind, I don't want to say cancels it out, but it just kind of, I, I, like when I think of, of her as a person, I think of all the good times we had. I don't necessarily like instantly think like, oh, she's, you know, a bad person or this or that, or I don't think about like our last fight that we had or whatever she was trying to do. Um, I think about all the good times that we had together and all that type of stuff. So I don't know if other people are like that, but I just want to make a message, guys. Like, if you find yourself in just an absolutely shitty situation that you kind of don't want to be in and you have the capability, uh, take out your phone, make a video of it. And then, you know, memories fade and all that, but people don't really change. They might change or, 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 or guide, their, their path might be guided a little bit differently, but they don't, the core of the person doesn't change. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta watch out for stuff like that. But like that video just like, re, you know, it's kind of solidified my choice to not want to be with her. Um, this is the ex that her husband, her now husband or whatever, was messaging me and saying all kinds of shit to me. And I, I just, I, it, they're perfect for each other. So that was a, a very stressful week because I didn't even know who that guy was. But it kind of tied into how her life was, um, how her life is, all that stuff. And, you know, some, some people are truly broken. And it's taken me my lifetime to realize that I can't fix everything. I can't fix every single problem. I can't fix every single person. And I damn well can't fix anything or something when the other person doesn't want to fix it. Um, it sounds so simple, like such a simple concept, like, well, yeah, duh. But guys, people surround themselves with this type of shit. They attract this type of shit. They get so used to it that when they don't have it, like the fighting and the bickering and the screaming and the yelling, they'll either seek it out or create it. They'll be the ones like trying to start fights and stuff. It's very interesting. Very interesting. So, you know, you see all the quotes on Instagram and Pinterest and all this shit uh, about being positive and surrounding yourself with positive people and all that. And a lot of, like, the majority of people that I know don't actually do that. They get stuck in their rut. They surround themselves with, uh, you know, like-minded people. And sometimes that's not a good thing. So... That's just kind of my message for today, guys. So I'm, I'm headed out of work. I'm going to get Grant now. And, uh, 
I left my laptop at work downloading some files and stuff, so I am just going to hang out for the evening with my little buddy.